So great. Yeah, we want to talk a little bit about the, the new perforator attachment that we're coming out with. Uh, it should be available early uh, 2025. Um, don't have exact timing on that yet. We're working on getting it all tooled up, but um, this is a production intent configuration here. One of the really nice things about the new perforator is that it's going to be compatible with essentially all of our equipment, um, everything except the Model R. So there's a couple different footrest configurations that bolt onto the main chassis. Uh, this perforator here is mounted to an H24D. So this is the footrest configuration for a Model H tractor. If you wanted to put this perforator on a Model B or a T or a D, um, just be a, a different footrest attachment that bolts onto the back of the unit. So essentially everything else is the same, um, but you have the flexibility to put it on really any walker mower um, that you would want to. Uh, from a power standpoint, you know, uh, the Model B, a B23, uh, runs the perforator great. So I don't know that I would necessarily put it on like an S18, more from just a weight standpoint because the perforator weighs quite a bit. Um, but a, a B th clear through an H uh, are going to run the perforator really well. Uh, the perforator is mechanically driven, same PTO style drive system as our decks. Uh, we drive to a right angle gearbox underneath this cover. Uh, there's an additional uh, stage of chain reduction. And then the final drive is done via belt. So the belts give us the shock loading um, that we need. In case you hit something hard, the belts are going to slip and not tear up the drivetrain. Uh, similar to the old uh, perforator that was available about 15 years ago, um, there's two halves to this. So we can actually open up the, the front of the unit. You can see the it's still a, a crank style aerator, but the components are quite a bit different. Rather than the big eccentric cam style uh, crankshaft, this is a cast iron crank. It looks a lot like what you would see actually in an engine. Um, so very durable, big single piece cast crank assembly. And then the tines um, are running on, on plastic bearings, um, but they're individually replaceable and very easily removable. If you need to replace a tine, if you break a tine, uh, two bolts, remove the, the tine cap and it'll drop out very simply. So maintenance and repair on this is, is much easier than the prior version of our aerator was. The overall aeration width on this is 42 inches from tine to tine. The overall unit's a little bit wider than that, but the aeration swath itself, uh, right at 42 inches, there's 12 tines, so six per side. Um, so it's a, a nice um, aeration density. Uh, from a ground speed standpoint, uh, you set the ground speed of the machine using uh, this indicator the indicator here is essentially telling you where the tines are located. You want to run the unit with the tines more or less vertical, uh, but you don't want to run it with the tines pressing hard against the front of the unit. So um, you can see as the, tines, as the tines move back and forth, which will vary with ground speed, this indicator moves up and down. So we have a decal on here. You essentially want to run uh, the indicator so that it's even with the top of the, you know, in that green band where the green band is even with the top of the, the cover there. And that indicates that your ground speed is set correctly for your aeration speed. Okay. And do you have a price on it? I, I don't have an exact price. Okay. Um, well, uh, yeah, That's all right. well, I, we'll be able to release that soon, okay. but um, it's going to be... I think very competitive with, well, it's gonna be quite a bit less than like a dedicated stand-on aerator uh, with more productivity. And so I think the value that this aerator is going to provide will be, uh, well, it's gonna be, be very impressive, so.